Dr. Debbie Pushaw is currently a professor in the Department of Curriculum Studies at the University of Saskatchewan, Canada. She has been a teacher, school consultant and principal, but also importantly, is a parent. Her work focuses on the role of parents in school communities and how parent engagement and the use of parent skills and knowledge can improve student learning. Dr. Pushaw was in Australia in April-May 2016 as the keynote speaker at the Biennial Catholic Schools Parent Conference. This interview was recorded by Catholic Education Services Cairns as part of a series of interviews on parent engagement. I had been an educator for a long time before I had children and before my first son entered school. So I thought I knew a lot about schools. I'd worked as a teacher, a principal, I'd worked as a consultant in central services, I taught overseas for the Department of National Defense. And so I liked schools, I spent a lot of time in schools, it was a comfortable place for me. And then the day that I took Cohen to kindergarten, was, was, it was an awakening day for me. It was, it was actually really quite a shocking day for me. I had my two babies in the stroller and Cohen and off we went to school and I arrived and didn't know what to do, didn't know where to go, didn't know what to be. I was worried if I went into the classroom, I was one of those hovering mothers that wouldn't let go and was, you know, too, too in control. If I stayed outside, was I, oh, I'm just glad to get rid of this one so that I can go home and just have two to take care of. It was a crazy day for me. And it was really the moment that started my work with parent engagement because, like I said, thought I knew schools. And it was in that moment that I thought, oh my gosh, is this what schools are like for parents? Is this the experience they have every day? And um, so I thought this, you know, I just felt marginalized. And the more the year unfolded, the first Meet the Teacher Night, the first Parent Teacher Conference, it was that same feeling over and over again of really being irrelevant to his education, living on the margins of his school landscape. And so I, um, I enrolled in the doctoral program and I began my work in parent engagement and my son is now 25. He was five at the time. I'm still doing that work and I think we still have to continue to think hard about the place and voice of parents on our school landscapes. I think many of our schools are still based on a kind of a colonial school system and, and I, I talk about that often as a protectorate, a school as a protectorate. As educators, we drive into a community, we claim that ground called school, and we establish policies, procedures, practices, we plan the curriculum, and then we tell our parents how we want it to be, right? We tell the kids how we want it to be. So we really put ourselves in charge, and it's, it's not really very reciprocal, or it isn't always reflective of the community. And so parents are outsiders. They're not necessary to that work that we're doing. And so until we change our thinking about what it means to be a professional, what it means to be a teacher, what our work is in relationship to parents and to families, I think we'll continue to sort of say we're the people in charge and so um, we really don't need you, thanks very much. So that invitation for parents is often not there, that sense of welcoming. I was talking to some parents just the other day and they said, we don't know what we're supposed to do. No one tells us. And so um, if we believe it's our space, then we just continue to leave people out. If we start to see it as a shared space, that means we have a whole lot of new work to do to provide an invitation and a welcome and to begin to think about how we can work together. For me, anytime parents are um, difficult, are I, you hear the term helicopter parent, they're hovering. Uh, I think it's a signal to us that we, there's something they need that we're not providing them. I don't believe there is a difficult parent. I believe that someone who's asking hard questions has a need that we aren't fulfilling. So in research I did at Princess Alexandra Community School about 2005 or so, one of the things that came out of that research is that we need to look inward rather than look outward. So we can look outward and say, that's a difficult parent, that's a challenging parent, these parents don't care, these parents should. Or we can take a look inward at ourselves and say, what am I doing that's causing this parent to feel uncomfortable, to feel angry, to feel disengaged? Or what could I do? What could I do differently that would cause that parent to feel 
more satisfied with what's happening for her or his child at school and so on. So I think it comes back to us. And I think those moments of challenge are good moments for us to take a really good look inside of ourselves, our beliefs and assumptions about parents, and our practices. What might need to change, what we might need to do that we haven't been doing. As teachers, so often we say our schools are welcoming schools, and we're confident that we welcome families into our schools. And I often will ask people to do an environmental walk around their school. Inside, outside, come in through every entrance and take a look. So you walk up to a school, what's the first thing that you will see? Visitors, please report to the office. Please, take, at least in Canada, please take off your wet and muddy footwear. No dogs, no pets, no parking, staff parking only, staff entrance only, and so on. And so when I was working with Princess Alexandra Community School, which is a school in a core neighborhood, 97% First Nations population, quite a dis distance from school because of our history of residential schooling. The, the, the families um, were not always coming to the school. And when the staff really looked at what they believed and they wanted connection, they wanted to be respectful, they wanted the school to be a safe place, they wanted people, whether it was staff, children, parents, to have a strong sense of self-esteem in the building, they looked at their signage at their building and they said, this is not working. This isn't in line with what we believe. This isn't in line with what we say we believe. And they took all their signage down in a community in our city, which would probably have been considered one of our most dangerous. They took all of the signage down and instead, they taught everyone within their building to be greeters, children, staff, everyone. So when you walked into their school, someone would walk up to you and say, hello, welcome. Can I help you find someone? If they knew you, they'd say, hey, Deb, hi, would you like a cup of coffee? So the children were all taught to say welcome or hello and something. And so they used that kind of a practice instead. It changed the whole tone of the school to one that you felt comfortable in. It identified a stranger if someone was there who shouldn't be there, so the safety issue was still taken care of. But the respect, the connectedness, the self-esteem, the safety, all honored with that shift in practice. I think teachers have some, some typical ways that they often reach out to parents. So they'll send a school newsletter, they'll make a phone call, uh, they may invite parents to the school. And then when the parents don't come, or they plan an event, and if parents don't come to that event or don't come in large numbers, again, they're saying the parents are hard to reach. And so I think when we're educators and we have paid positions on a school landscape, it's our responsibility to make that contact. We're the ones with power. So we're the ones that have to use it. We're the ones that have to reach out. So if I want to have a meeting with a parent and that parent isn't coming to the school, I phone and say, can I drop by? Can I come over? We have a lot of parents who are not comfortable with schools for many reasons. Perhaps they just don't feel um, able enough to be there. Maybe they don't feel welcome enough. Maybe it's their literacy level, their own past school experiences, and so on. And so they're not going to come to us. School isn't a good place for them. So what if we go to their homes? What if we call and say, can I drop by and talk to you there? Would you like to meet at a coffee shop? Can I meet you in the park? I think that, certainly in my experience, when we reach out to parents and when we make that effort, they respond. And, and we talk about invite, invite, invite. Sometimes we send one invitation, we don't get a response. They're hard to reach. What happens if we continue to invite multiple ways, multiple times, we never stop? Will they become more able to reach? And, and, and my experience has been absolutely. They are much more accessible when we, when we make that effort and when we leave the school landscape to make the connection. Well, I think we have to remember that parents are engaged in their children's lives all the time. From birth to forever, they're engaged with their children, doing activities with them at home, reading to them, taking them to church or cultural activities, sports, music, and so on. But we often don't call that engagement. We only count the engagement that happens with us right at school. And so I think, first of all, let's acknowledge all of the ways that they are engaged. And William Jane's work tells us that the engagement in the home when where parents create an educationally oriented 
ambiance, those are his words, that's the thing that makes the most significant difference to student achievement and other outcomes. So I think our work then in terms of engaging families is to say what are all the ways they're engaged when the children aren't with us and how do we bring that knowledge into our schools, how do we use it in our teaching and our planning, how do we ensure we're using that to create classrooms and curriculum that reflects our children and their families. And so, so I think honoring the fact that they are engaged is, is really that critical piece, number one, and then um, we can slowly invite them onto our landscape as well. But it isn't, it isn't only what happens with us that's important. I think there's a real difference between parent involvement and parent engagement. And often we talk about those two terms as if they're the same, we use them interchangeably. But what we've learned from the research and what we know is it's actual parent engagement in teaching and learning that makes a difference to children's outcomes in school. And so that's the place we really want to get to. Where we've typically stayed is with parent involvement. We ask our parents to fundraise, we ask them to be aides in our classrooms that help us on a field trip, they're organizers of school events, they're audience members for their children. Those are wonderful things because they enable us to do things in schools we wouldn't be able to do without the extra assistance. And we want them there cheering on their children. But the research shows very clearly that those involvement activities don't impact learning. And when we think about what the very mission of our schools are, it's, it's to impact um, kids' learning, kids' achievement. So we want to get to the place of engagement. Parent engagement means that we're asking parents to use their knowledge. They're not just a warm body who can help us. They're people with knowledge of their children, of teaching and of learning, and they bring that knowledge. So um, I'm having a conversation about my son's program at school and I can say, I want to tell you a little bit about what he reads at home, the kinds of things that he likes. Here's what I see um, about, you know, in regard to my son as a literate person. And then you as teacher can talk to me and say, and here are the things that I see. So together, then we can make a plan for enriching experiences at school. That's parent engagement. So it has to be, I think, a real use of the parent's knowledge, and it has to have a focus on teaching and learning. That's a shift for us. I talk about a curriculum of parents in some of the work that I do, and, and what I'm trying to make visible is that when we're in teacher education programs, undergraduate or graduate, or whether we're in in-service uh, teacher education, we often look at the new math curriculum and, and a constructivist pedagogy. If we're working with our learning children, we look at a pedagogy of play. We never talk about our work with parents. So we have students graduate from a teacher education program and become a teacher. One of the very first things they do is work with parents. They've had no education on it. They've had no experience with it. They've developed no beliefs and assumptions about their work with parents. They're just thrown into it. And some surveys have been done that said, what are the top two things that concern new teachers? It's working with parents and classroom management. No surprise there. So for me, what I'm trying to say is what would a curriculum of parents entail? What are the kinds of things we want to be teaching prospective teachers and current teachers, as well as educational leaders and so on, so that we can work in respectful and reciprocal ways for them, with them? I think one of the things that we have to remember with our engagement work, it's taken us hundreds of years to have our schools become the schools that they are right now. It isn't going to change overnight. It's going to be a bit of a process. And I think we just need to be patient and let that unfold in meaningful kinds of ways. So um, I think it's a matter of really defining what it is we want, what do we believe, and then beginning a process that leads us closer to that. And that means asking our families, asking our parents what they want, um, how they'd like to be engaged, what ways, when and how as well, not deciding for them. Um, an example, I, I talk with my students, I guess it would be part of our curriculum of parents, about the difference between stories of families and family stories. So sometimes in a staff room you'll hear stories of families. I think I know this family, I tell you what I know about this family, oh they're this or they're that. And that's a story of a family, it's a story told by someone outside of the family looking inward. 
And so we've been really trying to do a lot of work on family stories. How can we invite families to tell their own stories, to share with us who they are, and come to know them that way? So we've been doing a lot of things like, instead of having a Meet the Teacher Night, we've been having a Meet the Family Night, or a Meet the Parents Night. And we'll invite them to come, and we usually do an activity, uh, we do an activity together, maybe we read a children's book that's a prompt, uh, maybe we ask the family to bring artifacts, and they do, they do some sharing in small groups, clusters of families around the room, and they, they, they share with each other who they are, what they believe, what, what their culture is maybe, things their family loves to do, and so on. And the families get to know one another, and the teacher moves around the room and gets to know the families. The more we know each other, the more we're able to work together, the more I can access um, expertise, resources, the more I understand how to respond uh, in a specific situation, the more I understand perhaps why that mom is kind of hanging outside the classroom all the door the time and, and is concerned or anxious about what's happening. So those kinds of practices we can shift easily. So it's identifying where we're at, knowing what we believe and what we want, and then shifting. So something like turning a story of a family into, into a family story. It's so interesting to me that when we think about a school, we all have a picture in our mind and we know what that school looks like. I know that when I go to my son's school, they're going to be teaching mathematics. Imagine if a principal said, you know, we're very busy. We don't have time to do mathematics, so we're just going to leave it out. Everyone would be up in arms. The Ministry of Education, the parents, everyone would say, that is not okay. But we know we have a body of, of literature that says parent engagement makes a significant difference to children's learning, and we ignore it. We see it in some schools where we have a keen principal or a staff who's interested in working with parents. But then maybe the next school, we don't see it. Or we see it with this teacher's practice and not with another. So I think the work that we have to do there is to say we know this research is important. It's not an option. It's not a random event anymore. How do we build it into everything we do? So just as you would expect as a parent to have your children engaged in mathematics instruction in school, you would expect to be engaged in the life of your children's teaching and learning at school as well. That it would just become a part of the very fabric of schools. So it means redefining what it means to be a professional as a teacher. It means redefining uh, what it means to be a parent of school-aged children as well. So really creating a new, a new understanding of that role for sure. I think one of the things that is really important for any school to do is to really talk about their beliefs and assumptions about parents and to have an explicit conversation about that. Um, schools that have done that, that have, that have really unpacked some of the assumptions that they've had, uh, that have spent time thinking about the kind of relationship they want and, and the values that underpin that kind of relationship and made that conscious, can then move from that place of beliefs to practice. So I think we really have to spend a little bit of time deciding what it is we want, and then how would that look, what would that, what would that mean. Each community is so different, and so the actual how it's done doesn't matter, right? And it can match with the needs and the wants and the interests of the people who live within that community, both teachers and parents. But it's that sense of making a commitment to one another. And, and that's really what that word engagement means. That N part of engage means make, engage, a pledge, so we're making a pledge to one another. So we have to come to that place that we actually are pledging to work together in a, in a relationship, a moral commitment, a relationship of care and concern, then the rest is easy to figure out. There's wonderful practices to learn from all, all over the place. Um, certainly the writing of, of the teachers that I've worked with have tried to sort of put out into the world, here's what I learned, here's what I tried to do with what I learned, here's what happened, good and bad. And, and there's lots of narratives out there that, that could guide practice once the commitment's in place.